you messed this up. My PlayStation has one of these. <laughs> and on Nintendo, we do this. Well, well, on the Wii, we could do this. And, and don't you think you could do one of those? And so they're really thinking out there, that Nintendo generation. And us, us old folks, not that you're old, but I mean like, like Ken, <laughs> folks like that, you know, it's just not made for, for that older generation. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I would just have a frag pattern, so. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we are. We're going to launch. I'll raise the landing gear. The, the ship obviously is right behind us, and on that screen up there, you can see where the little airplane inside those concentric rings. The greens are friendlies, the whites are unknowns. Red would be concern, confirmed hostile. Uh, this is all unclassified, clear for public release. Which block standard does this represent? Uh, so this represents block three at the end of the SDD phase. And so this would be. Uh, like the Navy would get when they take delivery and go operational in their carrier variant. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to have to, I'm going to switch to a B model. We wish the airplane could do this in flight. <laughs> then we're going to dump some fuel. Hmm. You can see the fuel page there. It's in that magenta color. We're dumping fuel out and it will only dump down to a pre-programmed level. So it won't dump out of any flame out. That would really be bad PVI on my part. There are no real speed brakes on the airplane. We just contort the flight controls to make Joker. drag. Joker. Joker means that we're down to some pre-programmed uh, fuel level. I'm going to lower the landing gear. There's that ship right there. And then I'm going to come do a 360 and then come back around and kind of line up. The airspeed is on the left, 245 knots. The altitude on the right. Of course, a fly-by-wire airplane, I'm just a voting member in all of this. There are three flight control computers, and, and sometimes they can veto the pilot, but not very often. Only if you're really going to make a big mistake do they take you out of the loop. And you'll see when I convert to the short takeoff vertical land mode that they begin to restrict my maneuvering authority. And so they try to make the airplane easy to fly but hard to crash. And so even an Air Force guy like me, I can jump in and I can, I can hover it just fine, and you'll be able to do that also. I'm going to get turned around and head toward the ship, and then I'll convert. This button right up here in the A model and the C model lower the hook. In the B model, that's what converts. It opens the doors and spins the lift fan. So I'm going to push that button. That tells the computers to open those doors. You can see the little airplane graphic down there, and what you're seeing is that we're demanding 49% of engine thrust, and the nozzles 90 degrees is straight down. And so notice that it's kind of taken over here. And so it's flying the airplane just a little bit for me and trying to keep me safe. And now I'm going to ask it to decel to a hover. And notice that if I want to, it can be very hands off. And there where it says detail, decel, I clicked the button on the throttle and said, airplane, decelerate to a hover for me. And so it stopped the airplane. Notice we're at zero velocity. 721 feet above sea level. The rudders, like in a helicopter, control the yaw. If I want to go up, I pull back on the stick and the airplane climbs. If I let go, it re-enters a stable hover. If I push forward, the airplane goes down. And notice there on the airplane, you can see the engine thrust. If I let go, notice how the thrust immediately changes and then it stabilizes. So it's taking 85% of the thrust to hold the airplane right here. If so I what does the 90 and 90 bit mean? Those are the nozzles straight down toward the ground. Oh, just the degree. Right, right just the yeah. degree straight down. And in fact, it, it's a good question, because watch this. I'm going to click off that auto throttle, and now I can have direct control of the nozzles if I want to. If I want to go forward, I push the throttle forward, and the nozzles deflect aft, and the airplane starts to accelerate. If I want to stop, I, I pull back to 90. Bingo, bingo. In the real airplane, it's easy to find. There's a detent for 90 degrees. It's a little bit harder here when you fly, but you'll get used to it. The bingo bingo means that we're, we're really getting low on fuel. We have a 50-inch counter-rotating fan. It's not a very efficient helicopter, so we really burn a lot of fuel. Sometimes people ask, well, can you get down behind the hills and pull up and, and strafe and go back down again like, a, like an Apache helicopter? But we can't do that. Right. And so it's, it's really made just for, for vertical landing. So I'm pushing the stick forward. The airplane's going down. I can push the throttle forward a little bit and make the airplane go forward. 
that little hexagon is it's the velocity vector of the airplane and, and where we're really going. And so I can kind of use that to, to plan my approach. We're up at 550 feet above the surface. Have you heard about the distributed aperture system? That is, those are the six infrared cameras on the fuselage that, that look everywhere all the time. The, the sphere of infrared energy. One of the fallout capabilities is the pilot can look through those cameras or I can put them on a display. And so I asked to look through the cameras are looking straight down and, and let me see so I can see over the ship where I'm going to land. And you'll see the ship come into view as soon as we go over the top of it. There it is. And let's go back into a hover. I'll ask the airplane to decel. We're at 150 feet above the deck, 200 feet above the water. The landing gear are down. You can see where we are over the deck. And we'll just touch down here. Can I answer any questions you might have? 